been in town snorting and bellering at the sheriff, I judge. How did you know I was? Hey, never seen that horse before. Too fur to say about the man. How did you know I tangled with the sheriff? Oh, I'm just uncanny, I guess. Maybe you can be uncanny about who killed one. Could have been me. <laughs> You know some of these two-cent neighbors of yours that hope to become cattle kings until you come in here and took up this long piece of ground? And paid for the lease. Yeah, but they used to use that land for free. So ain't it kind of understandable why they want to run you out? You too, Sam? Shucks, no. I hate cows. Whenever I think of owning any more cows than I got right now, I just put their turds by stomach. <laughs> Seen him before. Now you take that hat the fella that's coming in here now. You can tell that he don't own no cattle. Neither will I, the right things are going. to a fresh horse. Yeah, I knew he would. Did you? Oh, I've never seen that fella before. Maybe you're lucky. Ah. Well, so long. So long. He's a pure stranger to me. You know that? Yeah. You told me. Seen me no place. You don't have to strike up no band. I know you're here. It's nice to find you still know me anyway. I know you better than anybody else in the world. <laughs> you got yourself cooked up in a real slum gully, ain't you? Have I? I heard about how they run your foreman over the big divide with his shirt tail flying. Last man you had, too, they tell me. How long have you been snooping around here? Is this all the pipes you got? I said, how long? Maybe 10 days. You know, it's a marvel to me how you never seem to know what goes on. I bet you don't spend hardly any time in the back room of saloons at all, do you? Not too much. You see how ignorant it makes a man to live cultivated the way you do? Well, I haven't worked this range for nearly seven years. Yet I know more about what's happening on it than you do. It's a lucky thing for you I happen to be passing through. And you're going to keep right on passing through, too. Will you kill me if I don't? You know, someday it might come to that. There ain't a thing you can do about me, and you know it perfectly well. What is it you want? Well, tonight I want to take a little ride. Just checking up on a guess. You want the man who killed Juan. If my guess is right, I'll put him right in the sights of your gun. You want to come? No. I don't want any part of anything you do. Tom, I talked to you. Hi, Jeff. Jack! Hi. That's what I said. This is the first day you've worn that gun? I wear it enough. Well, then why don't you use it instead of climbing the wall? I can see Tom's been neglecting your education. Well, we'll fix that. I gotta see you, Tom. Can you come out a minute?
What's Wichita want? Nothing he'll get. I saw Mrs. Boyce. She's all spooked up. Thinks something's gonna fall on her husband. Like what? Like getting shot. <laughs> Nobody has enough interest in Earl Boyce to want to shoot him. Oh, yes, they do, Tom. Earl Boyce knows who killed Juan. How? He saw it. She said that. Ain't I just told you? Fetch me a pony, will you? Smoke it up. Now, wait a minute. I'll use the one Wichita thought he was gonna use. Well, what's the answer? Jeff, put this on for me, will you? You can stay here tonight to rest your pony. Tomorrow, I want you long gone. Uh, I think you're missing out, Tom. I just happen to know something. I'm allowing for that. You've been in the Paladura ten days, and Juan's been dead only three. Why, Tom, you don't think I'd kill a man? No. You wouldn't kill a man, except for food. Juan was killed by a cow feed. Well, when were you ever anything else? Why, Tom, from Amarillo to Gee Witt, ain't nobody ever proved a thing on me except twice. No, I can't prove anything. I don't even want to. I just want you gone. I don't think he'd done it, Tom. Oh, you don't. Well, come on, we gotta get going. All we have to do if you think he done it is to ask her old boys. As long as we got a man who saw it. So he knows who killed him, huh? Get his gun belt off of the bed, Jeff. Right when I had a little soap in my eye. No, you didn't have any soap in your eye. Bring it here, Jeff. What's wrong? What's wrong? Don't you know what you've done? Supposing Wichita did kill Juan. How long would he let a witness live? You just talked to Earl Boyce into no breakfast forever. Well, I don't think Wichita... That's just the trouble. You don't think. All I can do now is take him over and find out. Get off. This man's a prospector, the fancy kind from the school. Been squatting here for a while looking for kerosene, he says. Say, he's pretty, ain't he? Tom, I, I don't know if I should have sent for you. We're in a little trouble, Kathleen. Well, I'll be in trouble. Who's this? He calls himself Kid Wichita. Kid Wichita? You've heard of him? I suppose a lot of people have heard of Kid Wichita. Earl, I have to ask you, have you ever seen this man before? Come on in. After you. Well, come on, boys. Did I kill Juan Amador or not? Why, can't you remember? It escapes me. I never saw him before in my life. Are you sure? All right, Wichita, your guns are on my saddle. You don't say. It just happens that I don't know anything at all about this killing. Whatever you may have heard. How can anyone's life be safe? Sorry to be so disappointing. It's just that I can't afford the wooden suit. Well, no one's measuring you, Earl. Well, I can't testify. And I wouldn't if I could. Sorry if my wife gave you a bum steer. Oh, <laughs> she wanted you killed, huh? He didn't say that. No. But it's an interesting thought. Yes, isn't it? Look, it's OK, honey. I'll get you off the hook. Tom, Juan Amador was killed by a little pig pen neighbor of yours named Kelsey. Juan caught him branding the wrong calf. Is that true? Yes. You can come out from under the bed now, bub. Your wife and I took care of it. Can I go now, chief? Yeah, you can go. Anywhere you want, as long as it's far. Oh, I'll see you around. Oh, say, honey, you best keep your things packed. I'll be coming back for you, most likely. You've seen him before, I take it. Of course not. Never in my life. It's a day in the life of O'Reilly. To O'Reilly, all days are the same. No land ever crossed by O'Reilly ever again looks the same. Now one day...
Well, you was right again. Why, sure. They're working Shirt Tail Meadows tonight. <laughs> we even got a moon. There's only four of them. That's too bad. Come on. Now watch it now. I only want the saddles, not the men. And another thing. You see that swing rider? The one on the pinto horse? He's mine. All right, let's kill those horses. <laughs> Rat took up smoking. Hush, will you? I think Wichita's toss back. Got people with him. Hooray, hooray for O'Reilly. He brings up the sun every day. See the sun coming up for O'Reilly. Hooray for O'Reilly. Hooray. Hey, you fellas go on inside and find yourself some breakfast. All right, who's with these? Why, don't you recognize them? They all close neighbors. D. Fletcher? Why, sure. And Jim Strake. And that whip slinger, what's his name? Uh, Gil Batson? Dead? Why, no. We uh, just knocked off the horses. The men run home. You wake me at sundown, will you, in case I ain't on my feet? Talk. Didn't you know they was the ones taken off with your cattle? Well, naturally, I knew they were Well, was now taken they off, know Mike. you know because I caught them at it. You satisfied? So now I can think up some way to explain those saddles, huh? Well, now, if that ain't pretty stupid, what's wrong with letting the owners explain how come they was driving your beef? Where were they taking them? Why take them anywhere? They just kill a few heads, skin them out to get rid of the brand, and sell the beef. Well, uh, if these men are alive, as you say they oh, are. Oh, yeah, they're alive, all right. They'll be here for them. A bareback? <laughs> I hope they feel foolish. All I know is they'll be shooting. Let them. Jeff, uh, take those, uh, take these hulls inside, will you? Go on, get. Now listen, I don't want to murder my way out of this thing. Well, then put these saddles on some of your horses and send them to the owners with our compliments. I think the boys will get the idea. Send them back? On my horses? Are you crazy? Why, the horses will come home later and won't cost us a thing. You'll never hear from it again. No, I'll never hear from it again. Well, look what they'd have to say. We was peacefully riding Tom Cloud's range at midnight when he come up and took our saddles away. <laughs> now, Tom, they ain't a man in the world game to take the laugh. Well, of all the crazy... F I'll show you how to handle these neighbors of yours. Oh, no, you're not going to show me a thing because you're well, not going to be... Somebody else on. is coming. You just finding out? I didn't know a thing before he was inside two miles. Then who is it? John Gall with a circle bar. Well, the old brass bull himself. You see how the tone of this dump picks up when I'm here? <laughs> Say, he's a determined looking old moss horn, ain't he? Hey, Turkey. Yeah. Keep an eye on this one. Morning, John. I've owned 20 miles in this canyon for near 30 years. It's almost that long since anybody thought he was big enough to start trouble with me. Somebody starting trouble, John? I hear Kid Wichita's gone to work for you. When a man begins to bring paid killers onto the range, it's my understanding that trouble is what he wants. Why, Mr. Gall, from Amarillo to G. Wick, with two exceptions, nobody never proved a thing on me. 
But you never moved in anywhere without murder breaking out. And you never left any place except under a cloud. Shortly after midnight last night, Job Kelsey rode into my place, shot through the body. He fell out of his saddle unconscious and never come to again. This morning he died. Now I can't prove that a known killer shot Kelsey while he was patrolling his range. I don't expect any witnesses to come forward. No, I don't expect none either. Hey, Parson, how's the coffee? Oh. I can't prove it. And I don't expect to try. But I'll have no more of this. And I'm warning you to get rid of that man. And quick. How? You don't seem to realize... All right, all right. Seems to me your son is sheriff here. Where is he? I'm fully ready to handle some of these things myself. I'll tell you why he isn't here. Because he's nothing but a Bill Show cowboy. and never could be anything else. Was you put him in here as sheriff? Why, if I'd have done a thing like that to the cattlemen of my county, I wouldn't be sitting there in a saddle. You know where I'd be? No. But I expect you're going to tell me that, too. I'd be out in the corral with my head under a pile of stomp straw, for fear I might have to look myself in the face again. I'm trying to think how many men ever told me anything like that. Do you know how many I think it was? None. Well, you've been told now. Yes. And by a man with empty hands. What makes you so sure that I can't shoot down an unarmed man? Because there happens to be a rifle bearing right square on your chest. I see that, too. Now turn your horse and get out. All right. I've told you what you're up against. It's all any man could do. Why, doggone me, you took enough hide off of him to make a shirt. <laughs> ah, maybe you was right, Witch. Maybe I was wrong. Oh, I sure. You want fresh ponies? No, Turkey. Tom just found out he needs us here. Yeah. We'll take it. So they like night riding, huh? Now, all right, we'll show them some. Yeah, we'll show them. They want to lift a cow, we'll lift three. Well, they owe me a few already. Last night, we give him one dead man and trade for a dead man. But from here on, we'll be more generous. We'll give him two for one. Great fog in the foothills, man. It's a pleasure to see you fighting back. All right, Witch. You just went on wages. Why, Tom, I don't want any wages from you. I just want half the place. Horses allowed in here. Oh, excuse me, it's you, Pa. Maybe you'd like to hear why I'm not laughing. Well, it was nothing. Of course, I thought it was pretty funny. I've laughed at your capers for years, but I can't laugh anymore. Well, I'll tell you what you do. Put two teaspoons of common soda in a cup of hot water and... Today, a man looked me square in the eye and very quietly skinned me alive. Where's the body? There is no body. I sat in my saddle and I took it. He accused me of putting a gun-shy featherhead in this sheriff's office. He said any man who stuck his county with a hoot owl like you should go hide himself. You let some son dollar say that about me? I couldn't help myself. Because all of a sudden it came into my mind, maybe he was right, that my now son... Wait, shut up when I'm talking to you! Two weeks ago, a killer named Kid Wichita come onto this range. Well, I'm watching him. You're watching him. And two men have been killed. Job Kelsey and that man of Tom Clouds. All right. You're through watching him. I want Kid Wichita run clean out of the county within the week. Oh, you too. Don't talk back to me. I'm not running this county from the end of an apron string. I can tell you that much. You're not running anything. But you'll begin now. I'll have enforcement in this county. And I'll have it from you. Kid Wichita is just a start. You hear me?
little neighbor. Palm up ahead. Yep. Hiya, Tom. What you been doing? Just moving the cows up to summer pasture. I ain't had enough help till now. Been doing something else too, ain't you? What's on your mind? Them saddles. You shouldn't have never sent them saddles back with Job Kelsey killed that night. I had all reason to believe that Kelsey killed Juan. But that ain't how Kelsey got it. He got it rustling cattle. Don't you see what you've done? Them boys could forgive you shooting at them, but taking the saddles and sending them back, you might as well shot them and killed them all. Think they'd like that better, huh? Somehow I believe they would. Tom, you ain't never gonna be through with this thing now until all three of them boys is dead. That's up to them. Another thing, your neighbors are saying that this kid Wichita, you brought him on this range here and hired him as a paid killer just to murder you way up and down here. No. I'm missing a couple of them, Tom. Must have run up a draw. Well, you better go back and see. I'm there. You know, Tom, there's not much can happen to a single fellow like you and me, but what about Jeff? You want to see him turn out to be like Wichita? Well, that's why I'm making this fight. So he won't. Well, what kind of thing you think he'd learn by just being around him? Well, he'll never learn to turn tail. He'll never get that from Wichita. Or from me. How much has our cattle increased so far this week? 46 head. No, 48. Uh-uh, that ain't enough. I figure every one of our cows should come in with three, four calves this year with a little help. We're giving them plenty of help. <laughs> Here, take my horse a minute. I told you I don't like you and I mean it. Hey, not enough talk. Isn't that sad? Why sure? Well, I'll see you tomorrow, where I can stay longer. Come on, let's go. You just missed him. I know. How often has he been here? Well, enough. Look, Kathleen. If that big owl who just bothered Tom, you... Tom, is Wichita blackmailing you? Blackmailing? I can't imagine you being mixed up with Wichita unless he has some kind of hold on you. Well, it takes hands to run cattle. Yes, especially nights. Everyone knows he's been making raid after raid. Listen, no one's getting hurt that doesn't need to, believe me. What about Jeff? Or doesn't he matter? Maybe he's all that matters. How long is it going to be before Jeff starts imitating everything Wichita does? I'm working against that as best I can. I believe you. I didn't mean to quarrel with you when we're moving so soon. 
That's all right. I, uh... I'm sorry you're leaving. Are you? Well, I'm not. I hate everything that ever happens in this place. Except knowing you. You've been a good friend, Tom. Sure. Tom! Come here. your arms around me. You've been thinking about that for a long time, haven't you? Yes. Maybe I have too. So now that's over with. Where are we? Nowhere, I suppose. That's right. You know that now. So try to get some sleep for a change. I'll send the buckboard for you when you're ready to leave. I'll let you know. <laughs> there he goes, finally. I was beginning to worry. Come on, I want to work the far side of Two Fake Ridge. Where's the cow? She looked like she might bust her legs, so I shot it. Oh, fair enough. Stock alone. You see that rock over there? Yeah. I had more trouble with that one rock than I had to dig in all the rest of this here canyon. cows. Only got 600 clams, but it's a start. Holy smoke, I never seen so much money in my life. <laughs> Say, it was pretty dark. I sure hope none of those cows was our brand. Who bought? The same people that was buying our beef from the neighbors. Oh, we'll get back some of our own. Gee, Tom, we got a man in here now. Just don't you try to keep up with them. <laughs> now, when you're learning, that must be the parson coming in. Uh-uh, it's turkey. Yeah, that's what I said. Now, while you're learning, you hold your gun like this. That's so the bullet won't get out and hurt nobody, because you don't never want to shoot people except on purpose. Now, when you take your finger off, the gun should go bang. Leslie. Wait a minute. Fetch me up that fresh horse, will you, turkey? You roll that can on out there.
You see how wonderful I teach? I want to watch out I don't teach you too good. You riding tonight? Me too. No, not you too. And hang that gun up. Don't you have any notion what cartridges cost? See you in the morning. All I say is it's time to lay low for a while. The old man's already been in here pawing the dirt. He said your tail was dragging and he's right. We're losing cattle every night ourselves. That Wichita swings a long rope. Well, put some sand in his whiskers then. You're going streaky? For Pete's sake, Gil. Kid Wichita ain't no sitting duck. How did they get Kelsey? Wichita dry Kelsey. Well, all right then. You'll be right there if we ever try that. Scared of him, huh? You fly. When I bushwhack a man, I want it legal. That's what I need from you. And that's all I need. I'll be there. When? I'll come out in the morning. Find out where he's riding tomorrow, and we'll fix up their whole outfit before night. Don't tell me you're chancing yourself. He won't get any chance. Now get out of town. I'm sick of hearing you squawk. And watch out he don't take away your saddles again before you make it home. Come on, Gil. People. I saw your light, so naturally I dropped in for a shot of stagger juice. This is not a saloon. Well, that's good. Then I won't have to pay for it. Well, help yourself by all means. Why, sure. This is unbelievable. <sighs> yeah, it is a little. Did you make it yourself? You've been balling again, I see. I want no trouble with you, Wichita. Well, now, that's all right, Earl. Lots of fellas believe in stirring them up a little. Helps them keep their figure. I ain't sure, but what it's a good idea. Well... Music lovers! Would you like to hear a little song? All we want from you is... There's a girl in the life of O'Reilly to O'Reilly, all girls look the same. But a girl who has once seen O'Reilly will never again look good. So what's the matter, Earl? Don't you ever tune this thing? There isn't a thing in the world you can do about this, Earl. It's one thing or the other, Wichita. I knew a Boyce once. Old Honest John Boyce. Found a million in silver and drank it up. Say, I just thought. Old Honest John had a boy. Went to some fancy pants mining school. Married a rich gal and then found out she didn't have any money. Well, I'll be. 
<laughs> so you're her, huh? Get out. Get out and stay out. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Of course, you want to hear the rest of the song first. It's a night in the life of O'Reilly. To him, night and day are the same. What's the matter? Don't you like this song? But the thing about night with O'Reilly. You know, this song was written by one of the best songwriters in the world. I've also written some other songs. Oh, Earl, don't you know what he came here for? Not to see me. He's here just to amuse himself by tormenting you. Why, sure. Some people get their fun out of spur-raking women. Others like to rile up men, that's all. If he can prod you into making some foolish move, that's probably just what he wants. That's fairly obvious. I don't suppose there's the least doubt in your mind but what you can kill me very easily. But unless you leave this house, that's exactly what you'll have to do. Please, Wichita. I've never asked you a favor before, but I'm asking you now. Why, sure. Don't you forget to keep your things packed, honey. Sweet dreams, bub. <laughs> Ain't nobody lives forever. I want you to know something, Earl. There were a couple of minutes there when I was very proud of you. He even knew about the broken catch on the cupboard door. How many times has he been here before? I'd say once was too many. That's not an answer. It never does any good to answer you. No, not when you have to lie. You can't lie to me. I know you too well. Do you think you do? I ought to kill you. But I think there's something else needs doing worse. Earl, why don't you put it out of your mind? He'll probably never bother you again. Cloud, I've come to ask your help. And you've come to a strange place. What do you know about the murder of my son? My son was shot to death last night in his office. The killer fired four times. Three of the bullets were sent into my boy after he was down. I'm sorry, John. Was Wichita in town last night? Well, don't you know whether he was or not? I haven't found anybody that saw him. But I know this. Men who would hunt down a law officer and kill him in his own office are very few. Wichita might do it. Well, I don't know what for. Maybe I do. I told my boy to run Wichita off this range. I'd like to think he was man enough so that maybe he'd begun to try. You know, after your boy is dead, a funny thing happens to you. You can't remember whether he was any good or not. You can't remember him as a man at all. You only remember him as a little kid. I suppose so. It doesn't matter now what he did that wasn't good enough, or what part I had in it. 
All that counts is what is up ahead of us now. Such as what? I'm stepping into my son's place. The time has come to choose upside once and for all. Because I'm going to straighten this county out. Now you can help me or you can work against me. There isn't going to be any on the fence now. Well, uh, you never did give me much choice, did you? I'm giving you your choosings now. Well, John, I'm going to take care of myself here in any way that I see fit. That's your answer, is it? That's the only answer I can give you right now. All right. But I'll tell you this. I'm going to get the murderer of my boy. If I come here again, it'll be to make an arrest. Let's get on down there. Come on. You boys better stick out here for a minute, and I'll go down there and see if he's loaded for grizzly or for squirrel. Taking orders for rice pudding. I already sold a batch to them neighbors of yours. I ain't hungry. All we need around here is a little peace. But Tom, that's what I brought you. I got here Jim Strait, Gil Batson, and Dee Fletcher. There's three cow outfits you can make peace with right now. They're setting them ponies right there. Seems like they get awful peace loving all of a sudden. Tom, I think you ought to talk to them boys. I wore a whole lot in these britches getting them boys in the talking mood. All right. Tell them to leave their guns in the saddle. Hang up your iron, boys, and come in by hand. And the whip. Gil, put that whip down. I guess you realize, Sam, if lightning struck right square in the middle of them three, my troubles would be over. All right, start shoveling. We ain't asking who killed Elmer Gall. All we know is none of us done it. Well, that's more than I know. And it's more than John Gall knows. These boys were the last ones to see Sheriff Gall alive. You know, a mistake like that's been known to turn a man into a memory. Look, boys, if John Gall sets himself up for a clean sweep, you'll see sweating and hollering. You'll hear a lot of people die with a yell. Well, he's set. Gall's got his sights set on you. And me, and Gil Batson here, and Jim Strait. We ain't got any time for any more wham pusses from Kid Wichita. Had enough of Wichita, huh? No, we like Wichita. We like the way he handles himself. Tom, these boys has been robbing you blind. They admit that. We'll call it square if one thing. If what thing? If Kid Wichita helps us take care of Gall. And if he don't? Then somebody will have to take care of Kid Wichita, that's all. You see it yourself. And after Wichita, there's Turkey? the parson, and me. Four killings before you're through. I make it five. I guess he's counting Jeff, Tom. Jeff ain't in this. He's rode with Wichita every night. I say he ain't in this. Tom, these boys has got gall in front and Wichita in the back, and maybe they've earned it. But a man's got to make some way out for himself. What would you do in their place? You want me to tell them? Yeah. You boys just have one next thing to do. And that's to get back in those saddles and ride them out of here quick. Before somebody takes them away from you again. I guess you boys better be moving. It's the first time you've been right.
Tom, I've been thinking about Joe Kelsey all day today. And I don't know what brought him to my mind. You don't, huh? The bullet went into his left ribs. Of course, he'd come right out again on the other side. Somehow, that didn't seem to reconcile him. Now, look. If you're trying to have me see Jeff with his face down, I'm seeing him. Oh, Tom. How did you get there? I walked through the canyon. Earl has my saddle locked up. You see what I keep telling you, Tom? There ain't no man in the world can make his life safe two minutes on end. Dangerous, all right. Gosh, I didn't mean that. But a man could be laid up behind one of them rocks and throw a bullet in here, and the bullet would get here before you heard the gun. Or he could shoot you from a quarter mile as you rode by, or he'd just walk through the back door like she's done and be behind you. There just ain't no way to take care. Oh, taking care isn't what counts, Sam. It's what comes next. You mean Wichita? He gave him a dead man for a dead man after a woman was killed. Tom, if you need Wichita, will you do one thing? Will you keep him away from Earl? From Earl? Oh, I'm just as sure as I'm sure of anything in the world. Earl is going to kill him. Oh, now, wait a minute. Who oh, was I know Earl couldn't kill Wichita unless he used some trick. But if Wichita so much as comes near him again, Earl will find a way. If he bothers you, I'll drop him myself. It's getting to be the worst insurance risk in the whole world. You want to tell him? No, I don't want to see him at all. Well, now, wait a minute. I'll take... Well, neighbor, you sure made history when you brought Wichita in. Well, the thieves was ruining me. Fighting fire with fire seemed like the only way. Then up went the barn. Yeah, he's got us in deeper every night he's rode. No way to turn back, no way out ever since that first day. Tom, you got a way out. And it's as plain as egg on your face. You had it then, you got it now. Why you don't use it? I'll never know. No, you couldn't, Sam. All right, Sonny. You scared me. I'm going to put a knot in your head the size of a mule's egg. I know who you're trying to be, and you can cut it out. Why aren't you out there taking care of the horses? I come in after a rubber egg. Take that gun off, too. You leave it off. The time I want you night riding with Wichita, I'll tell you. Well, all right. Take that cigarette out of your mouth. Now get to work, will you? What's it look like I'm doing? Hey, that's my shirt. Well, it looks like a rub rag. Why, sure. What do you want a rough lock jet for? That kid swings a hungry loop. Did you kill Elmer Gall? Something happened to Elmer? He was shot to death in his office sometime last night. Well, sooner or later, somebody was bound to smoke him. Did you kill him or not? Look, Tom, come on out of here a minute. Look, Tom, there's something you ought to know. You see that rock on the far rim? I had more trouble with that there rock than I had with the whole rest of this canyon. That's your answer, huh? Why, sure, I killed him. I ran my horse right over him. Oh, no, you said this was inside. I don't know why I ask you. Now, look, I'll tell you the truth, Tom. Elmer lost his head. His buck saw. Who saw? Nobody. I say, there was that buck saw lying right across his desk, and I don't know what come over me. All of a sudden, there I was, sawing off his head. What have you been saying to Kathleen? Kathleen? Let me see. Oh! I said, uh, hi, Kathleen. That's not why Earl wants to kill you. Earl wants to... Oh, no! I didn't think he had it in him. Earl's voice isn't important. This is just one thing too many, that's all. Well, what do you want me to do? Send him a plate of fudge? I set out to square up this range, not to mash it flat. 
Any more of this stuff and neither one of us will get out of the state. Hmm. I had a reason for taking to the long rope. Or I thought I had, but I had enough. I swear I don't know where all the money comes from. You're through, Wichita. Yep. It's been a long day. I'm not fooling. You're getting out. When's this? Right now. Tonight. Oh, now you hush up. I got a nice little herd all marked out for tonight. Now you let me take care of that and then tomorrow we'll see. All right. You sell off this one last bunch. Then tomorrow you take what share of the money you think is yours and get gone. Why, sure. I know you killed Elmer Gall. I know it as well as if I'd seen it myself. But I suppose there's just you and me left. Except Jeff, who knows why I can't see you hang. Wake me up at sundown, Mother. I'm to be Queen of the May.